A Homeless Christmas Story, written by Ryan J. Dowd, illustrated by Bradley H. Clark. And read by actor, director, producer, and homelessness advocate, Emilio Estevez. Winter's crisp darkness settled over the large brick homeless shelter. Chicago winds whooshed snow across a frozen parking lot. Christmas Eves at homeless shelters are not very different from other nights. Volunteers from a local church carried trays of steaming spaghetti inside. A hundred hungry women, children, and men, dressed in tattered coats, stood around outside, waiting for the shelter to open for dinner. Nearby, a lone man shuffled toward the shelter slowly, carefully, over an icy sidewalk. His massive boots made a soft crunching sound on frozen salt crystals. The man's coat and hat, while heavy, were unable to block the biting chill of this cold winter night. At least his long, tangled beard kept his face warm. People often stared at his beard and clothing. It had taken time, but he had grown used to people staring. In fact, he barely even noticed anymore. When the man reached the shelter, he dropped a black garbage bag in the snow. No one noticed. A man carrying a garbage bag of belongings is a common sight at a homeless shelter. A woman, in a coat four sizes too large, smiled at the man and offered a broken candy cane. He politely declined, rubbing his hands together to keep warm. Finally, the door to the shelter opened and everyone formed a line to go inside. The line moved like molasses. Some people had lost their shelter ID cards. Others paused for a weary staff member to wave a metal detector at their overstuffed pockets. The man with the heavy coat and long beard waited patiently. When it was his turn, the staff member greeted him by name and welcomed him in with a tired smile and a sincere Merry Christmas. The man heaved his heavy, drained body into the warmth. His thick boots tracked dirty snow inside. Fluorescent lights buzzed overhead, casting harsh light onto the rows of tables stuffed into the room. Different smells, some pleasant, others not, filled the air. Sugary, buttery cookies and strong black coffee were the strongest. A volunteer approached the man. The woman was elderly, thin, and wore a sweater with a reindeer on it. She greeted him with a tray of drinks in styrofoam cups, decaf coffee, or orange Kool-Aid. The man picked up a cup of coffee and took a sip. It was too strong, bitter, and hot, but instantly he felt warmer as the rich, dark coffee warmed him from the inside. The man nodded to people he knew. This was not his first night at shelter. He'd been coming for years, many years, far too many years. He vividly remembered last Christmas Eve here, and the year before, and the year before that, and... The person in charge of the shelter spotted the man from across the room and hurried over. She knew that whenever he showed up, chaos always followed. By getting to him quickly, she hoped to prevent any problems this time. The woman motioned the man toward a separate room, far away from everyone else. The man picked up his garbage bag and followed without complaint. He knew the drill. In an empty room, she had him sit in a single red chair that was missing some of the stuffing before she left to attend to other matters. Even though he was inside, the man didn't take off his coat or hat. This is not uncommon in places where people own only one winter coat and cannot afford to lose it. A few minutes passed in gloomy silence. A young girl, about five years old, with curly dark hair and brown eyes, wandered into the room by herself. She was eating a cookie shaped like a Christmas tree, decorated with thick green frosting. The man looked up at the little girl, expecting to see fear in her eyes. Children were often afraid of him. Children living in homeless shelters, though, grow comfortable around strangers because of the thousands of volunteers. The little girl, green frosting squishing between her fingers, walked right up to the man. She noticed that he had a sorrowful look on his face. As much time as he had spent in homeless shelters, seeing children living in them still made him sad. 
it was clear to the girl that the man was trying to hide his feelings from everyone. She understood what that was like. A boisterous commotion broke out in the hallway behind the girl, but she didn't notice. Shelters are noisy places. It moved closer, but the little girl just stood there. Suddenly, a dozen young children tumbled into the room, trailed by an overwhelmed staff person. The children froze when they saw the man, their eyes wide. He sat up straight, took a deep breath, and yelled at them. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! The little brown-haired girl crawled onto the man's lap. Presents wrapped in shimmering paper with colorful bows spilled from the garbage bag. The other children giggled, scrambling to form a line. Looking up at the man, the little girl asked, What do you want for Christmas? He was silent. He imagined a world without homelessness. A world without shelters. A world where every child, every person has a home. A smile slowly spread across the little girl's face as she understood, me too. That's what I want to, Santa. Thank you for reading our book. The team and I had an amazing time creating it for you, so thank you. The shelter in this book, by the way, is real. That, that place is real. Uh, it's called Hesed House. It's in Aurora, Illinois. It is the second largest homeless shelter in the state of Illinois. And it is a very, very special place to me. I started volunteering there when I was 13, uh, joined the staff in college, and became executive director after law school. It's, it's more or less all I've ever known. Um, and, and Christmas Eves are real at the shelter. Santa actually does come to the shelter and, and, and visit the residents, uh, even, the, even the smallest residents. Residents that should not be homeless. Um, let me rephrase that. No one should be homeless, whether they're, whether they're a few weeks old or whether they're, they're elderly. No one should be homeless. But you know what? I got to tell you, we, um, we can end homelessness in our communities. We can absolutely end homelessness in our world. Um, homelessness as we understand it today has only been around for about 40 years, about four decades. And, and if, we can, if we can create homelessness in four decades, surely we can uncreate it in less time than that. But uh, the book actually tells us what it will take to end homelessness. It will take hope. We must have hope but not the hope of naive fools and untested daydreamers. The kind of hope that changes the world is born in experience. It has scars from battles won and battles lost. It is weary and ragged, but unbroken. Always unbroken. It will take impatience. We must grow impatient with a status quo that accepts dehumanization as the inevitable consequence of modernity. We will remake the world only when our souls can no longer bear to witness the unnecessary suffering of others. It will take courage. We must have the courage to reject the cynicism that grips our world and whispers in our ears, you don't matter. Such cynicism is worse than cowardice because it robs our generation and future generations of possibility. It will take sacrifice. We must accept that the world will not be saved through our social media posts. Real change requires the real sacrifices of real people willing to challenge very real systemic injustice and political inertia. We will end homelessness, but only when we want badly enough. And when we do, I hope that my own story ends similarly to this book. My great granddaughter climbs up on my lap and asks, Gramp, Gramp, what was Hesed House? I rub my long white beard and I say, Hesed House was a homeless shelter. And with total innocence, she asks, what's a homeless shelter? Well, dear, I sigh, taking a deep breath. There used to be people in our community who didn't have a home to live in. But, but that was before you were born. 
Humanity is worth a struggle. We are worth a struggle. Merry Christmas. Thank you.